So how to be a better programmer? Of course, by learning better coding. But there are more to it. If you want to learn better coding or better way to program, there are few other essentials you got to know and you have to master. None of them are very, very difficult to do, but there are certain process and procedure to get done. Hey, this is Tapas. Welcome to Tapas Script, where you learn things fundamentally and conceptually. Today, we are going to talk about a few practices that will make you a better programmer than what you are today. This is about the experience sharing, what I have seen in my two decades of software engineering journey. That's what I'm going to share with you. Hope you like it. And in that case, Please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel because once you subscribe, it motivates me, boosts me to do better. Let's get started. Let's start with problem solving. A better programmer knows how to solve problems. Suppose you are building a house and you don't have any idea of how to build a house. You are not an expert to it, but minimally you know that you need a land. You need a project plan, you need bricks, you need cement, you need woods, all these raw materials. And then you have to employ people to build the house. You have to employ carpenter, plumber, electrician, painter. And finally, you get a beautiful house in your hand. Similarly, when you get a problem in hand, don't just rush to solve it. First thing is not about getting the solution. The very first thing is to know the problem itself. Many developers, they just jump into coding after getting the problem in hand. This is something I would really, really discourage that you should not be jumping into coding immediately. Rather, there are a few steps that you need to keep in mind. And if you do that, you will be a better problem solver. How you have gathered a little bit of information about your house building and build the house finally, the problem solving is exactly like that. For every problem, there will be an input and there will be an output. You need to identify what are the inputs required for the problem to solve so that you can get the final output expected out of it. How? Let's see that. For example, if you have a problem, first try to break it down into multiple sub problems, multiple small problems. So breaking down a big problem into smaller one is a skill and that's what you got to learn. For each of the modules that you have broken into, try to identify what will be the pseudocode. What is the pseudocode? Pseudocode is not the actual code that will be running and giving you the proper output. It is more about identifying the logic. We are going to talk about the logic in a bit, but let's say that you know about how to build the logic. So for each of the section, you will be building the logic and then you will identify how those logics are related to each other. One portion of the problem is related to the other portion of problem. That is when you also define how the data should pass from one portion of your problem to the another portion of your problem. Apart from understanding the problem statement, breaking it down and then doing the mapping that we have just learned, you also need to master coding. So you got to know how to do better in coding. So do some kind of competitive coding, do some of the practices. There are a lot of online tutorials are there there are a lot of online applications are there where you can actually master your programming languages that you are willing to learn but after doing everything the most vital thing for problem solving is practicing you got to practice you got to practice a lot you have to code a lot and this is how you get better at a daily basis so problem solving is always about finding the parts of a problem and try to think how you can stitch them together so that at the end of the day it gives you the proper solution how to think logically as a programmer? What does logical thinking means? As a programmer, you got to know, like if you do something, what is the possible outcome? And if you don't do that, what are the other possible outcome? Like that there will be many other conditions, like that there will be many other circumstances where you need to take a particular call. So it could be about branching out how your code path may look like, or it could be like how your data flow from one place to another. How do you decide what is the next step to be done? How do you structure the data? How do you put the data into a certain shape that it can be usable for your application? So this all need to be part of your logical thinking, your logical building. Without logic, the programs cannot be a program. Without logic, a program may not really run in its expected way. So you need to be really, really strong in terms of your logic building and you've got to practice that. One of the best way of coming to logic building is about looking into this DSA, which is nothing but data structure and algorithm. This is where you need to keep practicing about data structure, about algorithm. And when you keep practicing your data structure and algorithm logic, you get better at your logical thinking. You get better off your problem solving, you know, all these things tied together. Another way that you can do stuff is about focusing on certain games 
game improves the things about logic building some puzzles that might be also be helpful for your logic building logic building is more about tickling your brain to find out what is the right solution that you're looking for the problem your problem to pseudocode will give you like you are approaching a solution then the logic on top of it will ensure that you are getting it right so practice your logic building practice your problem solving how does better programmer learn am i going to teach about learning uh, a bit the learning has two folds one is about reading another is about writing or taking notes first let's talk about reading so when as a programmer you are reading something it means that you want to acquire skill or acquire knowledge make sure that you have a proper schedule make sure you have a proper environment to read things very very deep avoid tutorial hell what exactly tutorial hell tutorial hell means that you're reading a tutorial and while reading that you want one tutorial you're going to another one from that to another one from that to another one without paying any attention to the individual one or practicing the individual one so to cut down the tutorial hell what do you need to do the thing that you are reading right now make sure that you have enough practice behind that if it is something which is related to programming related to hands-on you have to ensure that you are following that you are doing it and then only you move to the next one just don't be in the trap of tutorial hell so that at the end of it you won't feel very dejected so make your great reading habit find a particular time in a day where you must learn something new or you must make sure that your skill is improving that's pretty important for you once this reading habit is there you will be able to identify how to get the proper things to read for you you won't be looking into all the resources once you have that experience you will identify okay this is something that i need versus this is something that i don't need so that differentiation is very very important as a better programmer so that you utilize your perfect time your proper time your precise time because time is life the next thing is about taking notes as a programmer as a developer please build the habit of taking notes the more that you read the more you take notes because you can revisit those notes later point of time and then it's going to give you a lot of great clues about what you have learned if you have forgotten something that note is going to give you a lot of stuff about it in fact it is a great idea to take notes in such a way that you can even publish it in your word as blog or the blog post i myself have done that and have written more than 150 articles still date and for most of the articles note taking is what helped me so it's very important when you are going to learn you put both reading and writing as an aspect that's what makes you a better programmer that's what makes you a productive programmer at a long run Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you found this video helpful so far because your subscription will really motivate me to do better and provide better content. Okay, let's move on. The other thing that I want to conclude the learning part with is that you also have to unlearn. Unlearning means what? Is it like forgetting something? No, it's not like forgetting something. It's about something that you have learned and it may not be useful for you at all. You don't pursue that. You just get rid of that and move on to something else that helps you to learn something futuristic. So you have to also have to unlearn while learning something. Something. A good programmer have a lot of patience. But what is patience? Patience is a combination of your self-control, your empathy and acceptance. Oh my god, why am I talking about jargons? Okay, let me let me clarify and let me simplify. Forget about self-control, acceptance and all these things. By definition, patience is your capacity to tolerate some delay. Something is not happening. You want it to happen, but you have to tolerate that delay. And then you don't be anxious you don't be nervous and you don't actually suffering from this anxiety that is what is patience is now why the self-control and all this thing come into picture because when you can control your emotions your immediate reaction to a situation you want to learn something you want to learn next days and it is not happening you know it is not happening you have to have the self-control have to have the patience for it right somebody gave you a nasty feedback about yourself are you going to react to it immediately or you want to have the self-control so that's why the self-control come into picture then the acceptance acceptance you consider a situation for the time being like accept accept the fact for the time being that you have to wait because next year's learning might take 15 days and you're trying to do it in two days so it may not happen accept that inside you a better programmer accept the weaknesses the better programmer accept the fact that they have to wait they have to have some kind of patience to get the bigger things running 
and the last part about the empathy empathy is your ability to sense the emotion of other people we as a programmer are not living alone in this world there are many other programmers many other developers are around us from whom we will be seeking help whom we will be helping tomorrow so you should have that empathy to work with somebody else a better programmer always does that because if you see most of the items we use in the world are free and open source programming world is free and open source and if you want to be really somebody who wants to contribute or wants to get the best thing out of it you have to have the empathy for other people so patience is always a combination of that but why do you have to have patience? Suppose you are learning something new, you are reading a book or you are reading a new programming language or a framework, you need to have patience to learn that. You are debugging something which is very solid, your customer is on top of your head but still you need to have the patience to debug that and find out the solution of the problem. Or maybe at your workplace you don't have a great day, are you going to fight it about it or have patience to understand realize what kind of problem went in? You are going for a negotiation, maybe a salary hike or maybe some kind of thing. You are trying to do some code review or saw someone give some kind of comments on somebody's code or try to get some kind of comment on your code. You have to do some kind of negotiation. You need patience for sure. To have patience, practice it. Learn to let go certain things. Think and then act. Believe me, patience is such a such a crucial soft skill for a developer because Impatience developer, impatience programmer, they do early exit from the programming. You got to have a lot of patience to go long, long run in your career. The last thing I want to talk about today is about focusing. Better programmer focus well. What exactly about focusing? Don't you feel this pressure? As a programmer, you have a lot of things around you and you have to always have that rush you always have that rush, right? What to pick up and what to learn and how to learn and how to go about it. Do I need everything to learn? What should be my path? All this kind of thing. And that stress out a programmer pretty, pretty much that they cannot focus on things that where they should be doing. They should be learning stuff, but at the same time, they should have balance. Of course, today, if we look into just front end programming, this itself is like a vegetable market where you have a bunch of items and you don't know really what to pick from, what to learn, which path to go, where to go and all these things. I only have one answer to everything. If I look at it from a very higher up, I only get to see this. I need to master fundamentals. Without mastering fundamentals, if I just try to move from one to another, I will be having that frustrated feeling. And that feeling is not good for me as a programmer because at the end of the day, I may not learn anything. Rather, if I provide a lot of time understanding the fundamentals and then proceed from there, it is going to give me a lot, lot, lot of satisfaction. I'll be able to pick based on my need, right? What exactly I need? Okay, I want to be a web developer. I need to first be very very good in javascript after having very very good knowledge in javascript the next thing that i have to do in html and css then i'll be deciding my path whether i want to be a react based developer angular based de developer or any other technology that i'm going to pick up if it is react based developer i'll be having a lot of fundamental concept about react then i'll be start learning a framework like nextjs and then i'll be seeing like how my front-end application can be integrated with the back-end stuff using API. I'll be then learning a little bit about databases so that I can do most of the part of my applications by myself. It is a journey. It is not something that you need to start today and try to get it tomorrow. So focus on your fundamental. Then try to figure out which path you want to do. Then in that path, figure out like what's your plan and the alignment of that plan with the technology choices that you want to make. Pick up those and give them enough time with all the things that you have learned so far. Your problem solving, your logical thinking, your best way of learning things, having patience about learning. Finally, the focus will take you to be a better programmer. I hope it was useful and if so, please comment and let me know like how you liked it or is there anything else that you want to share. I'll be looking forward to making more such videos which will help you in your career growth and your career path. Look forward to it. Before we go, just a request to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.